Hey, it's Jordan with Status Quo. Happy New Year. If you thought strike fever was ending with 2023, think again. 1,500 UAW transmission workers in Indianapolis are now prepared to go on strike if they don't stop getting lowballed by the corporate ghouls at their transmission plant. Let me give you details of what could be another uh, big UAW strike, this time uh, outside of the big three automakers. Uh, this is from UAW. In what looks like uh, to be the first major potential strike of 2024, 1,500 UAW members of Local 933 in Indianapolis are making preparations to walk out at Allison Transmission if the company continues to lowball workers in the contract negotiations. Allison Transmission, which manufactures commercial duty automatic transmissions and hybrid propulsion systems, amassed over a half a billion dollars, over half a billion in profit through the first three quarters of 2023. Company uh, CEO David Graziosi has raked in nearly 18 million in the last two years alone. The union contract expired on November 14th, so before Thanksgiving. And on December 1st, workers resoundingly rejected a tentative agreement by 96% as the company refused to address core demands. Sound familiar to what UAW uh, workers at the big three just dealt with uh, in the historic stand-up strike that we covered on the ground uh, for 25 days? Uh, let me show you uh, a video that UAW has put together which shows you UAW is not slowing down after winning uh, this new contract against the big three uh, beyond organizing non-union auto plants, uh, which we've covered. Uh, we just interviewed Volkswagen workers in Tennessee who are organizing to join UAW as union uh, auto workers. Uh, they're now organizing a potential strike uh, in Indianapolis. Uh, let's take a listen uh, to why uh, these workers, transmission workers, uh, are ready to go on strike. Allison Transmission, we put transmissions in fire trucks and practically every yellow school bus that I know of. We do the transmissions for the tanks, for our U.S. military tanks. We're all over the world. We're very proud of the work that we do. We're not looking at this job as just a one-year, two-year, three-year plan. We're looking at it as a career. It's always seemed like it's been a great place to work until the last few contracts, not gonna lie. You know, I would love for it to go back to where it was. You know, good benefits, good pay. We gave up a lot during the recession and in those years. There really hasn't been a, a reciprocation of the sacrifices we made during that time. It's just like when we lost COLA and cost of living, we don't have any assurance that going forward we'll be able to keep up with inflation and things like that. Some people have been here 17 years, like when I came in, they haven't had pay raise. And we feel like we're being left behind. We had a person in 2020 die due to complications of COVID-19. They practically held us in here over COVID. I don't even think we got to thank you. I've had some medical issues. You have a lot of wear and tear on your body, on your wrists, on your back. Your feet are constantly tired, and it takes a toll on you. My best friend, when we hired in together, became great friends, he committed suicide. We had another lady who worked a double, slept for two or three hours, and then drove back in for another double and crashed her car and died. And I go, I live there. We have very little vacation time. I work seven days a week anywhere from nine, 10 hour work days. Yeah, I have gotten used to working those many hours so that, you know, that I can afford and take care of my bills. Some of these younger kids at their wage, I don't see how they're doing it. We can't even afford to live in the community that Allison Transmission is in. We just want a livable wage. Let's get rid of the tears. Let's get everybody on the same playing field, on the same pay scale. Most of us just want a fair deal. Most of us just want to be able to put our kids through school, take a vacation every now and again, pay our bills. Fork over the money. You guys are making gobs of money. You've got workers out there working a lot more hours than we work with a lot less pay. It should be better now than it was when I was working. It's not. That's a shame. Workers dying. Workers there seven days a week, workers living there. You know, I think this is really important because 
you know, obviously the UAW strike that we covered, the workers at GM, Ford, Stellantis, rightfully so, got all the attention. But think about how many auto workers work in transmission or parts uh, or other, you know, parts of the uh, production process that same thing they're dealing with, maybe worse than the workers uh, at the big three. Uh, and they weren't part of uh, that historic victory because they're not working for the big three. They're working for, you know, suppliers and whatnot. Um, I am very encouraged by this, not just because it shows UAW is not making the same mistake that a lot of, uh, you know, uh, activist groups have made, um, unions have made where they're not taking their foot off the gas after a strike victory. They're putting their for foot deeper on the gas pedal, harder on the gas pedal. Uh, but I think it shows that we need continuous labor organizing, continuous strike action, not just, you know, a major strike here and there, victory, and then we go to sleep for the duration of that contract. Uh, so I will definitely cover uh, if this strike happens, which it sounds like it's going to, uh, and also, you know, hopefully interview workers from Allison Transmission uh, in Indianapolis, who it sounds like uh, very similar uh, to the big three workers uh, that we interviewed on the ground, have not seen notable raises in over a decade. Uh, I also want to show you, uh, this is from uh, The Nation. Uh, they did a big piece on uh, UAW uh, and uh, the strike strategy and organizing strategy going forward. Uh, headline, Sean Fain's New Year's resolution is to lay ground for a national strike. Again, I've been talking about this. Call it what you want, general strike or something else. Uh, but right now, UAW, I believe, is laying the groundwork for what could potentially be a massive, massive strike uh, in a few years. Sure, we would love that strike to happen right now. But obviously, you need to lay the infrastructure and the groundwork for a massive, massive strike uh, that could be uh, have the effects of a general strike. Uh, so this is from The Nation. Uh, talking about uh, workers at the Chattanooga Volkswagen uh, plant, non-union. Right now, they're organizing to join UAW. Uh, Yolanda Peoples, a 12-year uh, Volkswagen assembly line worker, described to me how VOC members are, quote, trying to hit every part of the plant from young to old. On national auto workers organizing calls, people said she's gained skills and insights from other workers about how to approach workers who are on the fence or skeptical, Rather than barge ahead with a union rep, she's practiced asking questions, drawing out workers' concerns and hopes. I'll ask them, quote, have you ever gone through anything that you wouldn't want your son or daughter to go through? Make it more personal. Everyone has that one story, she said. This daily organizing work is unflashy, but absolutely essential. Too many past organizing campaigns, not just the UAW's failed attempts, but efforts by other unions in myriad of industries have faltered when organizers took organizing shortcuts, fell, fell back on gimmicks, or underestimated the scale of employer resistance. They tried to, quote, sell workers on the union rather than challenge workers to step up and make the union their own. They soft-pedaled the fight against the boss rather than describing a power struggle between workers and management. To withstand the tornado of the full-blown anti-union campaign, organizers must place the power struggle front and center in conversations, and they must build a union structure inside the workplace that could withstand the hostile winds. Amen. Uh, listen, as I've said, I don't have a lot of faith uh, in the presidential election or congressional or Senate races. Uh, making a massive difference in our lives. Uh, obviously, Trump getting reelected would definitely be a bad thing. Uh, you vote for whoever you want, third party, Trump, Biden, you know, it's up to you. Uh, it's not for me to tell you, but proof is in the pudding. Democrat, Republican, we haven't had a federal uh, minimum wage increase in, that was 2009, so that's 15 years. Uh, we still have no universal health care. Uh, we have politicians in Congress doing legal insider trading and enriching themselves uh, off of what would be illegal trading of stocks for us. Uh, we have a climate inferno, an emergency that Congress is doing nothing about. In fact, I would say they're pouring gasoline on the fire. That is the climate inferno. 
Bottom line, we're not getting uh, structural change or improvements through politicians. I believe we are beginning to see structural changes through the UAW's victory. Let's not forget um, the UPS workers who were victorious and getting a great new contract without going on, without having to go on strike. Just the pressure of that strike helped them get a new contract. Uh, healthcare workers, uh, nurses just got a new contract uh, in New Jersey. Uh, so we're starting to see workers not waiting for Congress, not waiting for a president, workers taking it upon themselves. Uh, so I'm really excited that uh, these workers, transmission workers in Indianapolis might be going on strike soon. Uh, and it would not surprise me if you see other U UAW workers outside of the big three that just scored that new contract uh, threatening or going on strike early on in this new 2024 year. Um, and we will continue covering uh, the organizing campaign in Chattanooga uh, at the Volkswagen uh, in Chattanooga. Uh, I've been in touch uh, with the workers there. They say the organizing campaign is going well. Uh, they have over a thousand uh, workers have signed union cards expressing interest in holding uh, a union election. Uh, and they see a lot of uh, interest among other workers at the plant, which has about 4,000 workers. So they might get an election sooner than later. Uh, thank you and solidarity in this new year.